All right. Okay, I'm going to get the ball rolling. Hello, and a very warm welcome to the very first Lost Fishes Art Challenge panel discussion and the announcement of the winners for the inaugural Lost Fishes Art Challenge. My name is Michael Edmondstone, and I'm the Communications and Engagement Lead at Shoal. The Lost Fishes Art Challenge has been a collaboration between Shoal and Conservation Optimism, which is a global community dedicated to inspiring and empowering people around the world to make a positive difference for nature. The purpose of the competition was to help engage people globally about the biodiversity crisis facing the planet's fresh waters and to help raise awareness of the work that Shoal is doing to help stem the tide of extinctions. The 10 species categories are the top 10 most wanted fish species in Shoal's Search for the Lost Fishes campaign. What is a lost fish? They are fish species that haven't been recorded formally in at least 10 years, but have yet to be declared extinct. Uh, the idea of the campaign is for Shoal to raise the funds needed to partner with local teams to go out on expeditions to find these species, and if they're successful, install robust conservation programs to give the species a second chance and hopefully bring it back from the brink of extinction. Winners in each of the species categories of this competition will become Shoal's official, pun intended, illustrators for that species. And the winners of the youth portfolio and overall winner categories will each win one-to-one -one mentoring sessions with one of three talented illustrators, Sophie Corrigan, Peter Horacek, and Rachel Hudson. We've been absolutely blown away by the reception of this art competition uh, with hundreds of entries from right around the world, including as far afield as Australia, South Korea, Mexico, Hong Kong and Colombia. And as you'll see in just a minute, the quality has been simply outstanding. Uh, there are a few things worth mentioning before I hand over to our wonderful judges. Firstly, that the brief uh, for the entries was kept intentionally broad. Uh, this, of course, made it extremely challenging for the judges to rank the pieces, especially as there were so many quality artworks to choose from. Secondly, the judges were given shortlists for each species, each category of between 10 and 14. These were made in-house by me and two of my colleagues from Conservation Optimism and Synchronicity Earth. Thank you, Nina and Julia, for your help. Uh, it wasn't an easy process, let me tell you, and the plenty of differences of opinion made for a lot of fun. Uh, finally, with such a broad brief, the judging ultimately came down to personal preferences of the judges. Uh, ranking art is incredibly subjective um, and, and difficult, but there can only be one winner for, for a competition like this for each of the categories. So it's natural that some really good quality pieces of art didn't quite make the final cut. Uh, we also won't have time here to mention all the fantastic submissions, uh, so go ahead and check the shortlist gallery uh, at the link on the screen, uh, which I'll put up now. Hopefully that's worked. Um, to, to, to see more. I think I showed the wrong one. There we go. Uh, okay, right. I better stop talking. Uh, with that, I'm extremely happy to introduce our three wonderful judges. Jeremy Wade is a world-renowned angler, writer, and television presenter whose television series River Monsters, Mighty Rivers, Jungle Hooks, and Dark Waters have made him a household name among passionate anglers and television fans in the UK, the USA, and beyond. Dr. Eleanor Adamson is the fisheries program manager at the Fishmongers Company. Eleanor is a molecular ecologist by training and advises the Fishmongers Company on a range of science-related fisheries and conservation programs. Shoal is lucky enough to have her on our team of advisors. Ivan Mikolji is an explorer, researcher, audiovisual artist and author who tirelessly documents the magnificent diversity and wonder of South America's fresh waters. He seamlessly fuses nature, science and art to uncover the world of wonder in fresh waters and communicate the threats these fragile ecosystems face. Jeremy, Eleanor, Ivan, thank you so much for giving up some of your time to be with us today and discuss some of the wonderful entries in this competition. Um, we do have a lot to get through and only up to around 90 minutes to get through it all. So yeah, I better, I better shut up and hand over to you guys. Could each of you say a few words uh, just to kind of introduce yourself and talk about how you found the judging of the competition? Uh, Eleanor, perhaps you could go first. Thank you, Michael. Hello, everybody. Um, what an honour to be here as part of this panel of judges, but also to have um, the opportunity to see what an amazing array of art there is out there. Um, what well, I'm getting some feedback. It's um, it is a real privilege, and it was a real challenge. And I think 
Um, being asked to judge art like this for the first time in my life really shone a light back on me and my experiences and how I view fish and my relationship with fish. So it's really interesting. I have a technical background, as Michael mentioned, um, and I spent a few years really thinking about taxonomy and systematics and what is a fish and what exactly does it look like and how do we tell species apart. So in that world, I was um, immersed in historical drawings, technical drawings, but art is so much more than that. It provokes an emotional response, and especially in this context when we're talking about fishes that people haven't seen for a long time that might be lost, and in, in a wider bag, fishes that are critically endangered in this very special um, world of freshwater ecosystems. So a real honour for me, but it also, um, I guess, shone a light on my own lenses, my own filters as a scientist, as somebody who appreciates art, and as somebody who actually hasn't had come into contact with that much modern art, it really challenged and excited me to be presented with such a mixed bag of, of entries, really modern digital stuff and very traditional line drawings. So thanks for having me as part of the panel. Brilliant. Thanks, Eleanor. And uh, Ivan, perhaps you could say a few words as well, please. Um, well, uh, nice to be here with all of you and to all the participants i wanted to thank him for sending all these entries the wonderful entries we have for me i had to i'll be honest i had to go into the shoal website and check i had to read all the fish because there were many that i didn't know i didn't know about and um one of our mottos is that we cannot preserve something that you don't know exists and this is exactly what ha what is happening if you really don't know these fish exist, there's no way we're going to be able to preserve them in the future. So I really had to go into Shoal and read them. And then, um, yeah, take a look at all the great art to be able to uh, judge this. But it was, an, it was incredible to see how many entries we got. It's amazing. Brilliant. Thanks, Ivan. And uh, Jeremy as well, would you mind just saying a few words about how you found the judging? Yeah, hello everybody. Uh, yes, I, I have very little he hesitation in agreeing to be one of the judges for this because I think fish are just such a, a, a great inspiration for art. There's so much diversity there. Um, the problem with this is, I mean, you if you're going to if you're going to depict a fish, um, you need to have a mental picture of what it looks like, um, and. Uh, by definition, this is actually a very difficult uh, competition because, you know, to have this mental picture, you need to know its body shape. You need to know uh, where the fins are, what the fins look like, other features like mouth and eyes, you know, to build up this, what you're going to put down on paper or other medium. And where are the references? These are fish that, uh, you know, the references are very few and far between. So you've had a very hard job to do. Um, then in terms of judging, uh, you know, I found that very difficult because there's no objective way of doing it. Um, again, I suppose what I was looking for, first of all, was a sort of an overall impression, just how satisfying is this picture, the composition, the color and everything. I did very much want to get a, um, a sense of this individual fish species, uh, which, as I've said, is, is pretty difficult. Uh, a lot of the entries went for a very sort of detailed, uh, realistic approach, which is, you know, quite a challenge considering the lack of imagination. But I think also some people managed to do an awful lot in a sort of more impressionistic way, just, you know, just getting that feel of the, of the fish just in some, you know, in a few lines and, and um, you know, a, a different approach. Um, what else was I lo looking for? Uh, colour, you know, use of colour. Some of the colour was very dramatic, but there are also some very nice... Uh, more subdued entries and some even monochrome, which were very strong, I thought. Um, something else that I was looking for was almost a sense of life, but again, very difficult. You know, most of the entries tended to be fairly uh, traditional, sort of lateral, you know, this is the fish, this is what it looks like. But actually trying to bring that fish alive, very difficult, very challenging. Uh, some people did try that um varying degrees of success because you're just having to take an image in your head and then manipulate it um but you know that was something i was looking for as well um and also in terms of speaking about the individual fish something about the behavior something about the habitat some people tried to get a bit of that in as well which i thought was a nice a nice touch um 
also good to see not just 2D, you know, there's, there's different media in there as well. So anyway, put all that together. How on earth do you, do you judge all that? I think in the end, I try to, you know, um, combine everything. And ultimately, I, one of the things I'm thinking is, you know, could I live with this on my wall? Because the best art, you know, it, you just go back to it again and again. You keep looking at it. You keep seeing different things. But anyway, thanks to everybody for taking part, because art, again, is, you know, it's about really looking at something and making other people look. And as Michael explained, this is a very important campaign. It's getting people aware of the fact that um, fishes are, are disappearing as we speak. Uh, this is just one small list. From my experience, I've seen it's happening all the time. And the more people who become aware of this through whatever, you know, means, the better. So thanks very much. Uh, we've done our best to judge. And uh, we, without further ado, let's get on to announcing the winners, I guess. Excellent. Thanks, Jeremy. So first up is the Anamite Barb. And this was a particularly competitive category with some really quality entries. Uh, Eleanor, which ones uh, caught your eye? Oh, well, <clears throat> so this was also, I guess, the f first portfolio I opened, the first folder of images. And so I was overwhelmed. I mean, here were fish jumping off the page. Um, and when I think about a barb, I, I, I immediately go back to my own experiences with barbs in, in rivers in Asia. And so there was sort of an, a, a personal connection which, which left off the, off the page for me. There's a few I'd like to mention before we move on to the winner. The first is um, Amin Friday's picture. I'm not sure if you can bring that up for us now. But this um, as Jeremy said, there were some that were sort of the classic lateral view, and this is that. But to me, I guess it just spoke to all my experiences with barbs. So it's lifelike, it's realistic, although, of course, probably this fish has never never been seen by the artist. Um, but it also captures, I guess, the silveriness of, of the scales of a barb in a, a really nice way. And for me, I uh, working as a museum scientist, I spend a lot of time collecting. And there's something about this fish that reminds me of the fish I worked with in collections, the fish I really had sort of an intimate relationship, unfortunately, in dead form, pickled in a jar. But it's sort of, it's there in life, but also very still the way, um, I guess, science depicts the fish. So I think this one deserves a special mention just because it, it captures the silvery life of a barb, but also you know, the, the science angle for me was important. Brilliant. And there um, are others, but I'm, maybe I'll let somebody else have a go. Um, yeah, I'll leave it you, to, to you guys to discuss amongst yourselves which ones uh, which ones you'd like me to pull up on screen. This this one totally drew my attention because of the silvery scales. That, uh, that, the way to depict it was really awesome. It was a really good piece. Very nice. Yes, yes, you could hang it on a wall, couldn't you? And be really happy to see it again and again. Exactly. I think, yes, as, as Michael said, this was this this category, I think, was 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 particularly, you know, the standard of entries was very good. I think it's something about, of course, not all fish, but scales. There's something about, uh, you know, scales that are very sort of inspirational. It is like this sort of like armor plating that they have isn't it there was one that took my eye which was i don't know if you can line it up uh, michael uh, aiden sweeney um which was more of a just a, a line uh, a bit more of a sort of a not quite so detailed but there was something about the quality of line there that i really liked that one there i just again it's a little bit impressionistic do you know what i mean it's not, it, this is not sort of photo realist but it, there's there's a real sort of enjoyment there in dealing with the the scales, and uh, that almost has something of you could almost make a stained glass window out of that. You know, it's so it, it it's 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 simplified in a sense of of you know it's all about the line very much, and one other that, that caught my eye here was the uh, Yajini uh, Shivaram. Uh, and this was, sorry, because we've got entrance from all around the world. I'm apologizing if my pronunciation wasn't great there. Uh, this was, again, uh, this, this was almost like a sort of metallic, that one there. You know, it's, yeah. uh, that's almost sort of reflecting off the page. And I just, again, not that sort of pure anatomical picture, but in terms of a, a piece of art to have on the wall, um particularly the reflective quality of the scales you know 
so th those those two jumped out at me but like i say the, the the overall quality i thought in this category was was just really good i suppose because maybe there's other barbs around which aren't this particular barb where maybe there's more in the way of references that people can get a general idea from brilliant yeah i, I really don't envy uh, your role in having to choose between them because th this was such a strong category i think I'd, I'd, I'd happily have a whole bunch of them on my own wall but obviously there can be only one winner. So, uh, Eleanor, would you like to introduce our first winner? I would indeed. This Anamite Barb was drawn by Christina Garcia. I say drawn because I think it might be a pencil drawing, but with no other information apart from the image, I can't be sure. But I think this impressed all of us. It is that sort of traditional view of a fish, but I mean, look at the detail in that lateral line. Look at the scales. I mean, they, they, they are there, aren't they? Like a real scale would be. The detail in the fins, that lovely face, um, the, the eye that does sort of, you know, it's looking at us. It's alive and you can almost imagine what that fish is thinking. So um, I'm very happy to hand over to the other judges who might like to say a little bit about this one too. It's it's nice how it, it feels like the scales are reflecting what, when it's in nature. It looks like if it were in nature just swimming. It has this movement just because of the uh, reflection it shows, like a mirror on the on all its scales. I really like that piece. It's amazing. And I think as well as the line, there is also this, you know, this again, it's quite a sort of traditional sort of, you know, the kind of thing you might imagine seeing in an old, uh, you know, an old book where not only the line but this you know this very sort of subtle very nice uh you know looks like sort of watercolor wash on there which is you know just the you know the subtlety of it and again that you know that there is something in that which uh does up to a point sort of bring it to life brilliant well done there christina and uh we should move on to the uh, the dr back here or the the batman river loach which I personally thought was a, a really tricky category as quite a few of the submissions, again, were, were brilliant, but a, a lot of them actually looked rather similar with, with very little to choose between them. They're all, uh, uh, yeah, they have the, the kind of um, the side profile, um, very similar to the, to the um, uh, original drawing from the website, uh, but with their own kind of splashes of personality and, and color on them, uh, there's real kind of differences in the detail. Um, Jeremy, how did how did you manage to rank them? Yes, I, I, again, I think that that this was a sort of uh, a difficult one to to, to to you know to to separate them. Um, there there was one in there. I'm just because I, I I haven't got sort of reference of everything in front of me here, but there, there, there was one in there which was almost a sort of three D approach, and it was actually. There was a little bit of humor in there, I thought. There was a little, uh, it was uh, a little bit of whimsy. It was a fish with a sort of a Batman mask on. Um, <laughs> and, I, you know, I quite liked, uh, I quite liked that one. And I think that was one that looked like it had used a bit of sort of computer technology. And it was, it almost looked like a sort of a, 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 a mm -hmm. sort of a 2D rendition of, a, of something like a plasticine model. And I quite liked a little bit of, um, the humor that was in there because again i think uh as as scientists you know we appreciate the need for scientific names because this avoids confusion it's, and the kind of thing that i do when i'm traveling I'm, I'm always dealing with people's local names for fish and it's really confusing you know you think somebody's talking about one thing they're in fact talking about something else so the, the everyday names can often be quite confusing but also quite colorful and also quite evocative so i quite like the uh, I, this one picture of the of the batman loach with a batman mask on for me was was um i don't know if that's easy to easily to hand but that was that you know that was that was one that i just yeah, raised a bit of a smile i think a little bit of a smile sometimes as a reaction to art is is quite I, good i i, I think <laughs> that was by uh, uh ellie stacy um she she goes by the the pseudonym illustrations um i don't have it right here in front of me but please do go to the the gallery at the website on the link below and and take a look for yourself she's done a whole range of really funny quirky um uh different submissions for the species so that the duck bill buntingy has a a plus the reflection of a, a, a of a rubber ducky underneath it and the uh the um the Anamite Barb is pushing a barbell. So she's kind of taken her own spin on kind of making puns and making it a bit more kind of humorous. 
And isn't that engaging and fun? I, I remember that one especially too. Um, and this, this lo I mean, lots of people will be familiar with loaches because many people keep them in freshwater aquariums all around the world. And they'll know that the personality of a loach can be quite fun. They're, you know, they're full of life and movement and a little bit cheeky. So to take that spin on a loach, even one that we've never met, was, I think, a very clever idea as well. Um, uh, can I um, mention Christina Garcia, who um, I just realised won the last category. Of course, when we were judging, we were judging absolutely blind. And so I wasn't aware that I was going to mention something that had uh, already um, received recognition. This one, to me, just captured that life and the silky velvetiness of a loach. Um, I've, I've fished, in, I fished in freshwater streams in, in southern Thailand and in Myanmar, in sort of sandy bottom streams where you turn over a, a lump of vegetation and suddenly there's this writhing mass of loaches and they're not like worms and they're not like snakes and they're really not like fish either. They're gorgeous little personalities sort of brimming over with life and, and wriggliness and also very velvety so so soft to touch it's not like that last fish we saw the animite bar which is all sort of hard scales and reflection um, loaches are, are, are soft and lovely and this um, although it was quite a different color palette to I think all the other entries I saw just captured that velvety sweetness but also the life of a loach so I'd like to, um, to commend this one yeah. Some some of these fish are really hard to draw or to paint. It's it's sometimes saltwater fishes. They have more color or they have it's more expressionist look. But these uh, fish that are so subtle, it's really hard to get them right. And and it's and their shape. It's this one is a really hard one to to, to get um, to get it right. And this one was really well made. And shall we, uh, shall we introduce the winner? Uh, Ivan, maybe you'd like to do, to do this one. And the winner is Abby Helm. Or Helmy? Abby Helm, I think. Uh, I, I think that's how you pronounce her name. Uh, let me just bring, bring her submission up. I, re I really like this one personally. But it's not about me. Yeah, it's, it's about what you, what you guys think. Awesome. I think, uh, again, it, you're trying to create empathy with all these um, drawings. And this is such a great piece to show, to bring it out, you know, to, to, to uh, anyone that can see it can relate to the fish in, in the wild, I guess. That's how I saw it. Absolutely. It's not sort of hyper real. Um, we can't see all that detail. In fact, the lines just capture the motion and the character of the fish and the colour also, I, I guess, captures what the skin would be like without really trying to render exactly um, this fish. Yeah, I think um, a very clever entry, um, especially the way the light's playing that, you know, across its, its back. I think actually, Eleanor, what you said earlier on about the sort of, you know, this because if you, you know, I think the the ability to create something in two dimensions, which has this sort of tactile nature to it, you feel you could actually reach out and and touch it. And, and this again, that you know, the white, which uh, when I was looking at the, you know, in more detail than this, that you know, that's actually an absence of of paint there. And I think that's that's really clever to get that, you know, to get a, a sense of the sort of the wetness of it. Um, and, and again, art is often about what you don't do. I mean, there's no paint there. Um, it's like negative spaces. You know, it's it's. Um, and you know, I think it's it's very you know it's not hyper detailed, but it's a very yeah it's a very sort of um, very sort of competent uh, you know accomplished bit of bit, a bit of work. This yeah, brilliant. I think Abby um, submitted four pieces, and again, it's well worth having a look uh, on on the, the shortlist gallery because they're some really nice pieces. There. I think she did the Buntingi. Uh, I can't remember the others off the top of my head, but they, they all had this oh. Yeah, no, I can't remember. But they all have this kind of, they look like they've just been pulled straight out the water. They're almost kind of dripping with river water. Yeah, they, they, they look fantastic. Um, cool. So let's move on to the third species category, the, uh, the duck-billed buntingi from Indonesia. Who would like to, uh, to go ahead? Maybe Jeremy, if you jump in on this one. 
Um, well, you, actually, Michael, you mentioned one that again, that again, just you know, I remember the one about the the one with the the reflection where the you know the fish becomes the duck, which again that little that little bit of humour there. Um, there was a, there was another one I remember, which was um, it was sort of quite a quite an interesting one. I, Right, I need to explain to you, but when we were judging, I mean, what's what, what, you know, normally if you're judging an art competition in, in sort of like normal times and when it's not international, the judges all get together in a room and they've got things and you can put them down next to each other. We've been doing this in different parts of the world with sort of documents and uh, I'm, I'm not a very great sort of technical person. So I haven't, you know, I've got that on my computer, but I'd have to switch you all off and come back in 10 minutes if I was to go right into that. But um there's one that I remember where there was a sort of a sparkly shower of uh, the fish was almost glowing and sort of floating. And it, and then it almost seemed a little bit sort of, I don't know, sort of metaphysical to me. It was almost like, you know, because we're talking lost fishes, it's almost like this fish was going into the afterlife. You know, the, you know, the species has gone, leaving a sort of some kind of sort of representation of itself and this sort of stardust scattered around, you know, that sort of... You know, a little bit out there, but but again, it's sort of that, that sort of that struck me as an interesting, uh, you know, that was you know deservedly in the shortlist. I thought. Um, uh, let me, see. yeah, don't know if you've got a got that to hand, Michael, or again, it's uh, it. We probably have to take a. Is that uh, <laughs> there, there's there, there's the one by Abby Helm is definitely um, is definitely got kind of uh, stardust quality to it this one uh, I, I really like I'm, I'm not sure that's the one I no that I oh, know that's not the no I, um but no that that but, one that you've got up there I mean again I think that you know there there were so many in all the categories sort of really accomplished sort of um fairly um you know traditional in a way without using that in a sort of you know in any sort of kind of negative sense and and, that, and this one i you know this one i really like as well um and, and again you've got those white dots which is where where there is no paint and you know just very you know good quality watercolor the only thing that slightly sort of i slightly wondered about on that was those fins look a little bit sort of feathery and I, i'm wondering i think on this one in particular there were very you know maybe there was just like the one reference and and, and the thing is if you've got a photograph of a fish that's been netted and maybe it's sort of dried out in the sun maybe the fins don't look you know i don't know if in reality they're like that i, I would guess they're more you know i'd guess that the, the reference on this one actually sort of handicapped the the artists um I'm, I'm getting calls on the chat from a couple of people saying that they think it may have been Holly Booth, um, who I, unfortunately I don't have her image to pull up here. But right. That, that was, um, I think she she did a range of kind of almost kind of disco disco fishes. She, it it right. looked like it was um, uh, had kind of uh, almost like they were on a night out, kind of sequins and stars and kind of um, yeah, a little bit like you say, almost a little bit kind of metaphysical. Um, so maybe it was that one uh, again. Head that to sounds the like it. And, and take mm. a look at um, take a look to see if uh, to see if it's there. Um, any others you want to discuss in in this category? To me, in this category, it was incredible how people did different colors for them. They had we had some entries that were blue, green, uh, yellow, and um, so it's. Again, we don't have the color reference, so really, it it was up to people's imagination, that, and it's yeah. the variability of it. It was really nice to see. That, that's actually a really interesting point, isn't it? Because again, if you uh, you know that hadn't occurred to me. If you if you uh, if, if you collect fish, and it, and if if you can't keep those fish alive, or even if they are still alive once they're out, out of the water, that you know they can lose their color, can't they? So so often, it's a bit like it's a bit like our knowledge of dinosaurs. We don't know what color they were. Um, you know, we, you know, uh, what we our mental pictures of dinosaurs are, are are based on people's best guess. We have, you know, we, nobody nobody alive today has seen a live dinosaur. So, um, e you know, even the stance sometimes, or you know, I think we're getting better at that, aren't we? You know, how they how they stood, how they moved, but um, it's yeah, it's it's quite something to think that you know when we lose these fish, we lose you know we do lose that you know not just that. And, and anatomy, but the whole the whole sense of them. But you know, you're you're right. Color is a and color is very variable within fish as well. I, um, 
you know, it's, 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 an, it's incredible. Mm. It's incredible mm. how people bring bring their own visual traditions into mm. it. So a person probably um, that we have entries in Colombia would probably see it totally different than a person across the globe. So that's probably why we have so many different colors too of the fish that we don't know what color it is. So I think that is pretty interesting too that everybody brings in art their visual traditions that they've had along their I, their life. And actually, I think you know, as as somebody who is particularly interested in in, in freshwater, I think that there is this uh, there can be a bit of a perception out there in in the wider world. Um, yes. We're used to seeing tropical reef fish and all the rest of it, and they're beautiful and all the rest of it. And uh, I, you know, Ivan, I know you're you're a diver. I've done quite a bit of diving, and you know, most people dive in the sea, and and a lot of them they describe freshwater fish as is brown fish in brown water, you know. And and it's like you know, no, well, some of them are, but actually, in terms of variety, there's just as much variety in terms of, of numbers of species in freshwater. But the variety you've got there, and 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 the color. Sometimes it's more subtle color, but sometimes it's incredibly dramatic color. And I think one, a great thing about this competition is it's actually, you know, it's, it's banging the drum a little bit for for, for freshwater fish. You know, they're, they're you know look look carefully and they're and, and they're interesting, and we don't want to lose them. You're right. Well said. Brilliant stuff. And uh, with that in mind, who's going to announce the winner? Jeremy, I think it's uh, I think it's your turn to announce this one. Right. So this is the Duckbill Buntingy. Let me just juggle my... Um, so the, the, the runner-up was Niels Plege, Plege and but the winner, um, and this is someone who, a name that's featured uh, elsewhere, uh, uh, Abby Helm. Oh, was it? It was. <laughs> I think this one... I think this one was Christina Garcia. Ab Abby Helm was the uh, the Batman River Loach. Um, I, I this one was Ooh. this one was Christina Garcia as well. So she's got two two out of the first three, and um, I think she also got uh, a, a kind of runner up. But uh, Abby Helm um, won the, the the Batman River Loach category. And, and but a Christina. special mention to Abby as well because she had that blue colourful fish that we were looking at in this category. That was ah uh, right, right. Take on this in this category. Yeah. So Christina, so Christina Garcia was the winner, was it? Yeah, right. exactly. So this is Christina's, but, and, and the, the kind of uh, the, the blue one earlier, yeah. the watercolor with the slightly raggedy fins, uh, was uh, Abby right. Helm, which was also right. a, a really lovely entry, I think. And, and I, I think you know, from from this, it's you know, it, it is very, you know, it is. It must be clear to anybody watching how hard, you know, how on earth can you can you say this is better than that one? But you know, it is very much this sort of subjective. But this, you know, this is again this very accomplished, very nice line very nice color again you know it's subtle color it's not it's not dramatic in your face color but it's and again uh, another word i think that uh, eleanor you use personality you know i think it's really you know you can't you can't actually put your finger on it when you look at one of these pictures but that picture there that fish has got personality you know then you know in fish are individuals they're not they're all the same they're not all just sort of you know we're used to seeing them perhaps as sort of cold you know cold you know on, on the fishmonger's slab that eye just looking out li lifelessly you look into the eye of a live fish it's, it's a different feeling as well the way they move the way they hold themselves this one's got personality um don't ask me you know what particular element of of it gives it that personality but it's but it's it's there it suffuses the whole thing I see somebody's just commented that the eye looks like it's moving, even though it's not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's a yeah. very and the comment. And it, it, it's, it not only has the line of an illustration, but it only has, it has that type of drawing. It looks like it had those dot drawings that we used to see too in, in natural history. Uh, stipple. Uh, art, I guess, that had, is, how, do you, how do you say it? I think it's called a stipple, although I'm no expert. Stipple. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> it has black dots that mm. pop it, make it pop. Mm, absolutely. No, this is, I mean, technically it's very beautiful, but it also is alive. And I mean, unlike the other one we were talking about earlier, look at the fins. You know, there's a cohesive, beautiful fish fin. You can almost, you know, see the way it would be moving in the water. Mm. Absolutely, yeah. It really is a, an individualist, isn't it, with that duck bill at the front and it's kind of bulbous eyes protruding out the top of its head. It's a really bizarre and wonderful looking 
species. Speaking of uh, the bizarre and the wonderful, Jeremy, early you uh, you mentioned uh, brown fish uh, uh -huh. in brown rivers, but also the, the the wonderful variety in fresh waters. This next species uh, has has both. It, it is uh, a, a brown fish, but don't let that uh, stop it. Uh, it. It you know close off your mind to it being an absolutely wonderful species. It's actually uh, I've got a real soft spot for it. It's probably my if I had to choose one out of all the species, that the fat catfish is just such an anomaly and a bizarre, mysterious uh, creature that, that there are so many questions surrounding it. Uh, if you don't know the story about it, head over to, to the Shoal website and, and, and take a read about it. The, the fat, catfish, fat catfish is also going to be the, the, the very first Search for the Lost Fishes expedition that um, Shoal will uh, set out on. Um, a media team are going to Lake Tota in Colombia in uh, December, uh, and the, the scientists are heading out in February to, to try and find it. Um, it's an absolutely remarkable looking creature. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I should let the, the pictures speak for, speak for themselves, really. Um, who would like to uh, to talk about? I think Alexandra Dandrena <laughs> was, was one that you, you guys particularly wanted to focus on. Absolutely. Um, yes, I mean, catfish are, you know, a lot of them are brown, a lot of them, are, you know, some of them aren't. But I think what's quite nice in this category is that, you know, some of the entrants, they, they decided to, to, you know, to jazz them up a little bit, which is quite nice. Um, there was some... Uh, but no, this, uh, this one, uh, yes, Alexandra... Um, Dum Jonat was for me. I think it, out of the entire competition, this one, in terms of actually showing that fish what it would be like, a lot is snuffling around on the bottom. And there's also, you know, there, there, there's a uh, there we go. And there's a, there's also a feel for the environment. I mean, that's exactly what catfish do. They, they or, or a lot of them do that. They sort of root around in, in, the, in the in the mud on the bottom. Uh, that's why they've got the tentacles. They're sort of, you know, they're 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 sampling the they're sampling sort of chemicals that get sort of released there. Um, and again, yes, you're right. The name. I mean, there are lots of fat catfish. I, I, again, I think as, as a sort of as a what do you call it vernacular name, you know, a lot of a lot of <laughs> vernacular names are very quite exotic. And I think I just think fat catfish is great. And and uh, wouldn't it be a shame if the fat catfish no longer exists? Uh, but I think you know you've got the so you can see the sort of the blubbery you know nature of the body there, um, and and again from what I do on on TV you know I think you know before I was doing stuff about freshwater fish I think you know you very rarely saw ugly fish because people aren't going to be interested in, in ugly stuff actually a lot of people particularly kids find ugly things fascinating you know and and often because the way something looks you know often you know that 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 just prejudices you against them there is this whole thing about misunderstood you know so sort of, spiders you know horrible animals you know well wait a minute you know you know just animals just get dismissed because of the way they they, they look and i think to to celebrate the fat catfish uh as this picture does you know i i love this one this 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 you know be happy with this up on my my wall um the other one that really struck me we're going to come to it later i think the winner of this category is a great one as well um yeah, I'll hand over to somebody else. Yes, um, what an interesting fish. <laughs> so, I mean, you've all talked about how fascinating and wonderful and mysterious this thing is. When I first read about it, and I hadn't heard about it before this um, this competition, I thought, look, a fat catfish, how horrible. Why would I even want to look at one I'm not interested at all? And the diversity of entries that came in was really interesting. And the fact that people seem to love this category and grab that idea of the catfish and twist it in all sorts of interesting ways to, to bring it to life. And, and so it wasn't some ugly, you know, dead lump of a thing in the abstract. And this, this entry particularly shows that life, the character that you can bring to something that is a very, I mean, this is not traditionally beautiful in any sense. Um, and while I really like this piece of art, I still probably think I wouldn't want it on my wall because it's that catfish. <laughs> um, but very impressed with the diversity of entries in this category as well, I think. Um, there were some that just took that um, illustration provided by Shoal and, you know, coloured it one way or the other. Some that really pushed the boundaries of, of art and interpret interpreting a fish in new ways. I, I really hope that you find that catfish in your expedition. 
I really hope it's not extinct. I really hope that you find a safe population. Can you say the scientific name? Do you really do you know it by hand? Or do you remember it? Is it a trichometrus? Or oh gosh, another... Ivan, you're, you're putting me on the spot now. Okay, don't uh, worry, don't worry, don't worry. It's uh, I, I was just curious because of the shape is so amazing. The, it's it's, the it's rhizo. Is, is like, it's from another planet, you know. It's, it's just something that landed with somebody. a meteorite, you know, landed with a meteorite, and it's you know something totally out that is not nearly close to anything you see in the wild. Mm. Right? I, uh, it's uh, it's very yeah. strange. Actually, one thing that could be said about catfish is, I mean, you know, as a sort of a group of, of, of fishes, they, they are incredibly resilient. You know, they're, they're, they're resilient to poor water quality. They're, they're you know, they're, they're tolerant of low oxygen. So I think if, if, if this has actually gone, that is really bad news because, you know, often catfish are the last fish to, to, to go from a particular environment. So, um, you know, fingers and fins crossed on this one. Okay, right. Yeah, absolutely. Well, well, speaking to um, to our partners and, and, and the scientists, there is good reason to believe that it's uh, it, it's still out there. L lake Tota is it's quite a deep lake in, in a very mountainous region um, northeast of Bogota, uh, and it it doesn't get tons of agriculture. There, there are some onion fields around the lake, but it doesn't get you know absolutely bombed with uh, harmful chemicals. Um, that there's no kind of big dam that's changing its habitats. Really, the, the thought for the um, uh, population decrease is that there were lots of uh, introduced trouts um, uh, a few decades back. Um, but it's thought that the, the, the trout live at a different level uh, in, in the lake to the fat catfish. And as Jeremy mentioned a little, a little bit earlier, catfish tend to live at the bottom uh, of, of bodies of water. So there's good reason to, to, to believe, definitely to hope that it's still down there, kind of snuffling around like this picture by Alexandra uh, in the sand at the bottom of the lake. Um, so, so that's our challenge to, uh, to, try and, to try and find it. It's really uh, a, a bizarre mystery. Why, why does it have these strange rings of adipose tissue? Why is it so fat? Like we'd all love to know. Um, but uh, yeah, fingers fingers crossed. We're gonna we're gonna find it. Um, so the uh, Good. so should we move on to the winner? Can yeah, I, let's do that. Would you like to do that? Yeah. Can I can I introduce the winner? Because I think this is a, um, possibly one of my favourites of all the competition as well. And it was Joanna Bowley with her entry. Now this is not a traditional rendering of any fish. Well, the fat catfish perhaps isn't a traditional fish either but awesome. here's somebody who's thought about art and representing a species in a very different way and sort of brought color and motion and life into um what i mean nobody's ever seen so how do we really know how to render it in a lifelike fashion so in this category joanna takes the top prize yeah it's it's, it's a collage right it's a collage of uh, it's it's so fresh it it, it totally it it makes it so modern. I, I, I loved it. It's something that could be used in so many ways, not only hang on the wall, it could be used in, in, on websites, etc., on the web and, and in many other ways. So people are putting, uh, asking in the chat if it's possible to use eDNA sampling to help find it. Uh, funnily enough, that is um, one of the tools that we're going to be using uh, in, in February to, to try and find it. Obviously, that comes with challenges because only 10 specimens of the species have been recorded and they're all in formalin and in quite a terrible condition. But uh, that, that's, uh, that's a, a part of the plan, one of the tools in the, in the box to, to use to try and find this thing. Um, uh, so yeah, should we uh, should we move on to um, the Itasi cichlid then? Sure. Who wants to jump in on this? Maybe uh, maybe Ivan. Would you like to uh, to jump in on this one? Sure. Um, I especially liked one. I have it by code, which was X. Uh, I don't know if you have it at hand. Um, it was. Hmm. Was it the colorful one? Here we go. I can tell you it will be. Uh, oh, yeah, that one is nice. By uh, the, the, uh, the, the print, the kind of screen. The print, print it, it, it looked like out. an etching. It looked like an etching. And to me, that was completely amazing to see it in that way. It was different. It was, it was a way, it was a more like flattened, old style way of 
capturing the fish. And I really like that piece. Uh, but you know, it's, it's another fish that is really hard. It's all it, what we saw. I, I Googled all of these fish to see if there, what was there. And this one was officially hard to do because it was all black. It was rendered totally black. So to get, again, to get the reflections in white is the absence, just like Jeremy said, it's the absence of color and playing with that is really hard. Coloring, pick, uh, coloring something, bringing to life something that is monochrome is, is really difficult. So I, I like the etching piece, and, but the, the, the others were really amazing too. We had even a sculpture made out of it, uh, which was, a really, was really nice to see because we had few sculptures in the, in the, in the entries. I can pull so, the sculpture up right now. I can pull the the, uh, the etching piece up in just a minute, but here's the sculpture. So that was oh, yeah. Nicole Bunyatov, I, um, I think, who did this um, piece. And this, I mean, again, we're not looking at a, a picture on a page, but but something more. And when you're thinking about a lost fish and a fish where there's an absence, to build something in physical space to represent that, I think is, is really brave and, and a, new, a new way of looking at the, the fish. So as well as being a, you know, a really nice sculpture and just a nice physical piece, it, it tells a larger story about the species occupying space and perhaps not occupying space if we have lost it. So I think, yes, I think this one was Nicole. So correct me if I'm wrong, but definitely deserves yeah, a special right. mention. Yep. Uh, I can also show Thomas's uh, print that Ivan was just um, discussing. Right there, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes, of course. Hmm. Yes. It's like, it, a, it, it's like a lino cutter or a wood cut or something, isn't it? It's, um, exactly. It's like yeah, an etching yeah. or, or yeah, yeah. Yes, like a print and... Uh, that is just something that looks like it would transcend in time. So you have to visualize it in the negative in order to get that as the, you know, so yes, yeah, you've got to do something quite interesting in your, in your head. Yeah, that's no, it, it, just a, a really nice one. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was, it was, it was really, difficult. Um, we, had, we had good entry, so it was pretty difficult to, to choose. Yeah, yeah, I, th I think, I, I think this category again, I, I, I suppose, you know, although this particular species, you know, you, you're struggling to get a reference, but I mean, cichlids generally and cichlids do have, again, they have this strong personality, they're quite pugnacious, um, you know, that you, and, and you've got that in the eye, I suppose the high shoulder, it's, it's interesting how certain physical features, they just... It's like, you know, everybody imagines that dolphins smile all the time, you know, but that's, you know, that's just the way their skull is, you know, it's nothing to do with what mood they're in, you know, but we, you know, we, we you know, as humans, we just read things in a certain way. So cichlids have got this rather sort of pugnacious look. Um, yeah, I like this one as well. And, and also the, I think the, uh, the 3D one, I, mean, I was looking at that and I was thinking, I, I think that might be clay. And I think it's, what I particularly liked on that was the scale pattern. You know, they've really had, um, she's really had fun doing the scales there. And often, you know, you've got the individual scales, but when you come back out, you've actually got this pattern, you know, it's like lines and, and, and you know, it's, it's a really good rendering of the scales there. And also there's, there's this very subtle sort of reflectivity, you know, if you get in, look close at that, you know, just the way they all shine, but in a sort of, in a sort of a dull way, it, you know, there's a real sense of scales being this sort of suit of armor, which of course it is for a lot of fish. It's, you know, they, that is their, their armor against the world. You know, the vulnerability is, is, you know, it's the gill filaments, it's the eyes, you know, but the, you know, that's the fish's protection. I, lo I love that one. Um, and I believe, um, Abby Helm also had a, an entry here, which was a which was a watercolor, but just really nice, a really nice uh, sort of colorful. Um, I think that was number number two, but we, we've seen a couple of those already. But um, again, I think you know the, the overall standard for, for for this was just was just really good. There we go, that one there. Again, that's that's you know that's color, but you know sort of really sort of vibrant, nice color, nice line. But um, a hard category to judge because there were so many good good entries uh, in this one. There, and uh, there, would you like to? Sorry, Ivan. They're, they're so they're, they're they as Jeremy was saying they have the personality. They're like the intelligent fish. Those the cichlids, you know. 
And certainly very popular in the aquarium trade, not this one, but something that more people would be familiar with. Should we, um, should we introduce the, the, the winning entry, which is an, another one that I'm, I'm really fond of? Um, maybe, uh, maybe Jeremy, would you like to, to, to announce this one? Right. Well, the the runner up was the the 3D one, which, you know, I think was very deserved. And the the winner was Leanne Tancock. No, <laughs> it wasn't. That's why I got on my, on my, on my thingy here. Oh, gosh. How did that happen? Oh, wait a minute. Oh, wait, oh no. Oh, no, 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 no. Gosh. I uh, see what's happened. I am, yeah. I am reading. Leanne Tancock was number one. I am the reading the number one. The win Oh, gosh. I've got the wrong page up here. That's okay. Where's that? I'm gonna Leanne Tancock deserves a shout out because her portfolio right, right, is fantastic. Right, right, right. Hold on, let me let me see. This is this is what I talk about. Uh, 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 <laughs> I'll pull it up here if you want. It was um, it was this one, Mitch Smith, who uh, also submitted a full portfolio of, of entries, and they they were all very characterful and dynamic, and really had a lot of life to them. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll let you guys talk about this one. What, oh, that one? Yes. No, you're, 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 excellent. Yes, I can see that now just peeping out from my, behind my other screen. And that, that one, absolutely, I think. And again, what you know, what you can do in monochrome. And again, that, you know, it's real, real personality there, you know, real personality and, and, you know, what you can do just with different shades of black, you know? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Very, very, very deserved winner. Yeah, I yeah. absolutely agree. I, I love this one. It has, has that cichlid character, but it's also got that sort of naughty glint in its eye. I mean, all the fins are really beautifully rendered. It, you know, it's, it's moving, it's got shape, it's got motion, but it's a black fish. So, you know, to capture all of that without any use of colour is, I think, you know, shows real talent and a real um, empathy for whatever this lost fish might actually be. <laughs> Yeah, it's Absolutely. it's difficult to pull off to pull off a, a drawing like that one. Like it looks like pencil or charcoal, and 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 getting all those uh, getting the reflections on of white on the black is really difficult. It's really nice. Uh, in, in in Madagascar, where the fish is from, the the local name for this species is Trondromainty, which literally translates as as black fish. And I think Mitch has done a really good job of of, of showing its its blackness while keeping that kind of dynamism and and the life in its eye and the kind of movement of it turning there. Cool. Um, well, the, next up is uh, is the Mesopotamian barbel, which actually ended up being a really close category with the runner-up coming just one point behind the winner. So some of the categories that there were clear winners where, you know, e each of you ranked the, the species out of 10, 10 being the one that you wanted to see win the most and then down to one. Uh, and some of them had as many as 29 points. So there was some where at least two of you voted 10 and one of you voted as the runner-up. This one was much closer um, with the runner-up, as I say, just, just one point behind the winner. Um, and there was another another entry that was close behind. So I'd imagine this was probably that, that there's a certain amount of not disagreement, but maybe complete lack of uh, a bit of a lack of full agreement between you guys on on which ones um, should have taken the top spot. Do you, do you guys want to talk through a little bit about how you found judging this one? Well, I mean, I guess you've said it. It was hard. <laughs> all, <laughs> all the entries are good. How do you say one is better than the other? You know, when they're, when they're all good, then, you know, the top five all get, get high marks and it's hard to differentiate. Mm -hmm. um, can I make a special mention for one that I think didn't place at all that you may or may not be able to bring up by Joseph Nicholson, um, which stood out to me as being very different to just about everything else that we'd seen from the competition. Can you pull out that one or is that? Is that um, this one? Yeah. Ah. It's just very simple. It's minimalist. Um, so, and, and in that sense, it was quite different from most of the other entries in this category. But I think it, this one deserves a special mention just because, in, I mean, it's probably really, I'm not an artist. It's probably deceptively simple. There's probably a lot of work and thought that's gone into, I mean, looking at it now, the, the way the shading runs across the belly, the way the spots are positioned, the way you've got the outline, but also all the subtle uh, underneath. But somehow it's minimalist and, and, and I think really beautiful. So a special mention to this one. 
Sometimes think, less is more, right? Absolutely. Yeah, and I, I think that one as well. I think some of these as well. I, I looked at them. You know, some of them you could see they're they're sort of traditional, sort of like you know, ink watercolor. This one you've got you've got the line, but I remember looking at the uh, you know the the shading and the spots, and I'm thinking that looks it sort of looks like airbrushing, but it's not. It's like a it's like almost like digital airbrushing. It's you know, there's a bit of clever technique here. I'd, you know, I, I'd like to know how this one was done, and this one. You know, again, it was very hard, you know, when you're going backwards and forwards, you know, th th I did like this one. Again, I think, you know, often simple is is good. Um, this, I did like this one. I think one, one difficult thing in this category is that um, around the world, a barbel often refers to a type of catfish, so a, a, a scaleless fish. However, I, um, in, in England, for example, there's a fish called a barbel, which is a, which is a scaly fish. And, and, you know, the barbel actually referring to the, the barbels on its mouth. And I believe that the Mesopotamian barbel is a is that, you know, is a scale is a scaly fish as opposed to a scale free fish. So, you know, the whole name, you know, there's, there is confusion generally about what barbel are. It means different things in different places. And I think this, you know, I think possibly some of the entrants might have, again, it just adds a layer of difficulty to portraying this, this, this fish, you know, the nomenclature, um, you know, not being, you know, whoever chose that name, you know, it's just, it's, you know, it, it doesn't narrow it down as much as it, as, as it could do. Good. Um, were, were, were there any other that you particularly particularly caught your eye again uh, in, in, in quite a quite a tricky category? To me, it was VII seven, I guess. Yeah. So that will be um, that's another one from Abbey Helm, I think. It is. Which I don't actually have here. I can um, I can try and pull it up. If you guys uh, hold the fort one minute while I hear from try and pull it up. I, I like the color it had because it sort of reflected what probably the watercolor in the area had. Or, you know, when you have a scaly fish that reflects a little of the nature around it. So it, it looked to me something that was reflecting the water that could be yellowish green or, or the plants or aquatic plants that was there or something. So that's that's what drew my attention uh, about yeah. it. So mm -hmm. it, it, it kind of it, it, I saw it as a reflection of what could be surrounding or surrounding it, the color of it, which is part of the environment. So that's that's what drew my attention. Actually, really good point that, isn't it? You know, fish coloration. What's that all about? You know, it's not to you know we can find it very pleasing from an artistic point of view but as a you know as as a biologist it tells you an awful lot doesn't it you know this what we got here is like disruptive pattern and of course a lot of fish you know basically they just cover themselves in mirrors so they they, they just disappear into the background and then you know other fish like some of your cichlids it's it, you know they can be actually quite bright and some of that is actually display you know so what's you know, the whole, uh, never mind the shape of the fish and all the rest of it, but the whole, you know, the, the, you know, the color scheme tells a, tells its own story, doesn't it? Yeah. And if you, and if you catch a fish in black water, which is sometimes orange, yes. deep orange, it's different if you see it underwater or outside. Once you take it outside, it's reflecting the sun, the clouds, the blue sky. But if yep. you see it down in its habitat and it's in green water, then it's a totally different color. And then yeah. you have that, that, that is, is it really green because it's in green color or is it orange because it's in, you know, or is it really yeah. like we see it outside yes. without any water? So what is the true or the reality? And there isn't, there isn't a right answer. And it, it, yeah. And indiv individual fish can actually change their color as well, can't they? But, you know, depending on, you know, if, if, the, if, the, if, the, if the river floods and it goes from being clear water to being muddy, those fish can become sort of like washed out in color, not, not half as interesting to look at. And the mating season, most of yes. those cichlids in the, in the yes. mating season, yes, yes. Their, their, their colors come out, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, talking, of, talking of color, one of um, one that one that sort of jumped out to me, um, and this one wa was actually, the, it was the runner up. Uh, Rachel Erin, and that to me was quite sort of cartoony. That one there, I just thought, that, you know, and again, you know, talking about less is more. I mean, that's and that's almost, you know, uh, 
there's a, there's a real sort of energy to the line. There's a real um, sort of personality to that. Um, Absolutely, personality. That's what jumps out about this one. You know, look at that face, yeah. look at those eyes. It, there's a <laughs> there's a whole character behind this drawing. Absolutely. Totally. And then uh, just one thing, you know, one sort of technical thing. You've got that. That um, I'm pointing at it. Obviously, nobody. Can, there's that di There's that sort of diagonal stripe there, which was that was present on the reference photograph on the on the shoal site. And I think that was just, it was just, you know, putting in some of the scales, but just uh, you know, and I think a lot of people have just, you know, obviously there's limited references, is what I say, because I looked at that and I thought, what's that? You know, is that is there really just a just a single sort of diagonal band of scales and I think that was you know but I think that that has possibly confused some of the artists but I mean but it just it goes to show that, that you know one reference and that one reference was just a sort of side on view and that's and that's been transformed in, into this which I think is um you know, I, I I like this. I mean, you know, the the, the fact that the spots are, you know, it's it's, it's a very unliteral uh, picture, but it's really got something. Um, yeah. Somebody's just commented. It belongs in a children's book, and you can see this fish having a whole story. Yeah, its own personality <laughs> and its own story. Yeah. Yeah. I wonder. Um, I just caught a look at the times, and I think. Perhaps it's time to announce the winner of this one because there's lots more people that we want to give a nod to. Um, yeah, good, good, good shout, Eleanor. So, uh, yeah, would, would you like to uh, announce the winner of the yes, Mesopotamian or the Lettered Spot Bible? <laughs> Thank you. And I think it was Jennifer Clausen with something very different from the other ones we've seen in this category. Here is a hyper real. I mean, could be a photo, couldn't it? Um, for somebody that's never seen this fish, they've really gone to a lot of trouble to imagine exactly what it might be like in, in real life. I mean, technically a pretty amazing picture. It's hard to believe it's in the photograph. I just imagined the, uh, who, uh, um, uh, Jennifer, Going and counting how many scales the the holotype had, or something, and then you know, <laughs> counting them and putting them there in the lateral line, and you know that that's uh, the, the the detail, the attention to detail was really well done here. Absolutely, it really does look like it's a it's a photograph. I don't know how long something like this would have taken, but it's really remarkable attention to detail. It must have taken forever. Yes. All right, so next one is the Haditha cave fish. I was doing them in alphabetical order, but I, uh, I, I skipped one out. So we better go back to the Haditha cave fish, um, which again, I, I thought was a, a tricky category in that, again, there were just so many fantastic entries. Um, but uh, yeah, who, who'd, who'd like to kick off uh, talking about which ones really caught their eye? Well, uh, to me, it was Ivy. I don't know if I have to... Ivy and um, let me see here. Was that? I don't know if you can. Prove. I I can't say. Um, um, what draw my, what draw the attention was that you could totally see the lack of pigment. You normally see a cave fish, or if you think of a cave fish as something that is pink, if you if you've seen them. Um, and this really depicted how you could see the blood vessels or the blood in it. And, and that just, it, it stood out just from, from the rest to me. I believe, I believe it's this one by uh, yes. pa Patakemon Pakachiraj. I hope I pronounced that correctly. Yes. And, the, and you can see the, mus the muscles or the lines of the muscles. It, translucent it was, it was, flesh and translucent skin yeah. with yeah all that biology underneath all the physical detail it's very clever to capture that on paper yeah. Yeah. and of course the you know the vestigial eye as well uh, you know i think uh, again it's I, I think when we it's it's a bit like drawing a person you know you you or drawing anything a lot of people tend to sort of just draw not what they see but what they think they see and i think possibly some of the entries have have an eye and and you know the the the, the, the artists who really looked it's like or really thought about it. It's like, wait a minute, you know, this thing lives in in, in darkness. You know, it's not. It, it's yeah. You know, this is one of one of the things that, again, one of the things that is specific to this fish that makes it, you know, that makes it 
not a generic fish. One thing, yes, lack of pigment. So you can see, you know, it's semi-translucent, but also also that vestigial eye, you know, it is a very, uh, yeah, you know, it is very specifically its own thing. Someone, someone's put on the chat the, the, the classic, funny, and incredibly cheesy joke. What do you call a fish with no eyes? A fish. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> um, uh, how about, uh, I, I think at least a couple of you wanted to talk about uh, another one from Mitch, actually. Another one from Mitch Smith, I think a couple of you wanted to, uh, to give a bit of a shout out to. This one here. Oh, yeah. I liked this one a mm, lot. Mm. You know, <laughs> a cave fish. Where where is it? You know, it's it's something that is translucent and colourless in a in a dark world. And I I love this picture. I mean, look at the scales. You know, they're there, <laughs> but very subtly. And then I love the mouth too, the face. You imagine this thing snapping around in the dark, looking for its prey. So um, I guess in terms of evoking an emotional reaction, which is more than any technical drawing, this, I, I really like this one. And, and done so simply as well, isn't it? You know, just that hint of the, of the, of the background, you know, it's, 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 you know, it, it, it's, it doesn't take sort of lots to, 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 you know, it, it achieves in terms of the background, it achieves a lot with, with, without, without much, if, if, um, if what I'm saying makes sense. Um, yeah. And the lines, the, the lines, hmm. the way that it, they were drawn, it shows movement. Yeah, it's it got, it's got energy. Visual, it has a visual illusion of, of yeah. movement uh, also. Yeah, yeah, it's, yes, it's, it's, it's got energy, isn't it, the picture? Yeah. Brilliant. And uh, who, uh, who, who would like to announce the, uh, the, the winner? Any of you can jump in? I've got the right I'll, list I'll up now. Hopefully. <laughs> I have, I've got that. And the winner is Camilo Julian. Perfect. From Mexico. Camilo Julian from Mexico. It's incredible how we have entries from everywhere. It's awesome, no? Oh, really cool. Yeah. South, South Korea, as I said earlier, Colombia, Australia, everywhere, all, all around the world. Around I'm not world. sure. I'm not sure we got any. I'm not sure we got any entries from Russia or from Africa. So if anyone from Russia or Africa is listening, 2023 get your uh, get your um, submissions in <laughs> so this is the winner um and again it's got that um sort of translucence and the muscle and bone underneath you know the lack of pigmentation but clearly this brings in a lot more i mean look at the they've got detailed fins they've got the geographical range they've got that scale that compared to the hand it sort of wraps wraps the fish in context which i think probably wasn't part of the um criteria for submissions but here you know adds a lot to that overall picture but the fish itself is you know is is worthy even without all that i think of, of recognition definitely I, I it, it looks like it looks like Sorry. what you go on the museum or what you would see in the museum on explaining with the, with the size you know mm. and the location it's really well done yeah it, it, it I, I like the fact that camillo kind of um ch chose to veer off brief a little bit the, the the guidelines in the original brief uh weren't dogmatic um they, they did kind of say originally to try and uh, focus on the fish rather than the background but it's very easy to kind of pull the fish off the background in this image um and and the background does give some it's very educational it really kind of shows uh, a little bit more about the anatomy and obviously the range and also how small it is it's very difficult to get a sense of scale um with, with the pictures but this shows the level of detail and kind of intricacy and something that's only as long as your thumb it's a, it's a tiny little thing but the you know all, all the more remarkable uh, for it really cool um Let's uh, let's let's keep things ticking over. Uh, the next one up is the spinach pipefish. Eleanor, which one's caught your eye here? Ah, well, um, I guess special mention <laughs> to Samantha Adams. If you can pull that one up, I think this one just um, 
fascinated me because I couldn't understand it. I mean, it, <laughs> and if you can pull it up, maybe that will make more sense to more people. It's almost like a photo or a textbook drawing. Is it real? Is it an image? Look at the fins. I mean, they, they, they just look like beautiful, delicate fins in motion. Is this, uh, you know, is this not a photograph? <laughs> so I guess that, that really stuck with me as, as something quite different from everything else. So, and, and that was Samantha Adams. So I don't think she um, placed. I think um, in terms of, I think it was, either, it was either like sort of chalk or pastel, isn't it? So in terms of, you know, bringing in different, you know, it's nice to see, the, you know, just the different techniques that were coming in. And, and, and exactly, I mean, like we said about the earlier picture, just looking at something and thinking, how, 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 do, they do, how do they do that? You know, is. is <laughs> And, to, yeah. and something. Yes. How did you do this, Samantha Adams? If you want to chat. <laughs> yeah, let, let us know if you're watching. Let us know. <laughs> yeah. and, and if you've seen pipefish in the uh, freshwater pipefish in the wild, they're really small. They're really thin. It's really hard to draw something like this with the details. So, yeah. um, can. Oh, no, that's not that's not the answer yet. Um, can we move on to Tracy Sachs, who I think also gets a special mention, speaking of, you know, capturing a thin fish very cleverly. Another one that I like to imagine. I mean, another one that just looks like this could be a photo. I mean, obviously not in situ with that background, but, you know, look at the eye. You know, look at that delicate little mouth and those delicate little fins and the, the speckled body, I think. Um, and, you know, green, of course, spinach. <laughs> yeah, it's almost ethereal, isn't it? So it's almost kind of filament thin. It's almost kind of not quite there. Just this mm -hmm. tiny little fluttering thin thing that's, yeah, really kind of remarkable. Um, and uh, who won? Who was the winner for, for the spinach pipefish? Do you want me to announce that? Because I've got my... Yeah, go for it. Sorry, I should have said, yeah, Jeremy, if you want to uh, to announce this one. Right. Fingers crossed. I believe it is Bri Brianna Jorgensen. Yeah, that's right. And what did you, uh, what particularly caught your eye about this entry? I like, well, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's slightly stylized, um, nice, subtle color, personality, uh, I like the you know the sing, simple shape you know it's a sort of a, it's a satisfying shape and I, and I'm not an expert on pipe fishes but I think they you know they they they're unlike your quotes normal fish they in the way they orient themselves in the water and the way they move and all the rest of it um, that that weird eye I'm not sure, you know I, you know that that um, and then you and then you get in there and that and the, and that um, that 3D feel is by very detailed. Uh, Ivan mentioned this earlier, earlier on, I believe, sort of like stippling, you know. So it's a, it's a sort of simple, com you know, simple line, but then some really, you know, getting in there in the detail. Uh, yeah, I think it's just a satisfying, yeah, nice, nice picture. Well deserved. Yeah, and the, yeah. the light looks like it's coming from below. It's not illuminated from the yeah. top. Yeah. So it, it kind of shows like if it were uh, on, probably not on a Petri dish, but it looks like it has a different lighting that you probably would see in nature. It has this, this my, mystical lighting on it. Yeah, I could definitely hang this on my wall. I think it's really beautiful as an interpretation of a, of a fish. I think it's a really beautiful piece of art. Yeah, Bri Brianna actually um, was was another one who submitted a few different entries for different species, and I, I personally really liked the um, uh, that they're, they're quite stylized, as you say, Jeremy. That they, they, they look a, a, bit, a bit different, and yeah, I, I, I really personally liked her whole portfolio. I think it looks really, um, for a better word, uh, really cool. It looks really good. Um, great. So we better push on. The Sir Daria shovel nose sturgeon. Uh, the winner of this category was uh, one of those that I discussed uh, mentioned earlier, where I think it had twenty nine points overall. So at least two of you voted for it being a number one. There's a real consensus among you guys uh, for making it your favourite. Um, what did you like? Oh, actually, no. Let's uh, not say who won it first. Um, which other ones caught your eye in the uh, in the Sir Daria shovel nose sturgeon before we? mention the winner 
Um, I might mention Vincent Lee's entry, um, which is another one, I think, as we saw in a previous category, where it's more than just a fish, but there's a bit of extra information there. But um, this is, I think, a beautiful style of, of artwork. I guess it's watercolour. Um, but the fish itself is coming towards you. It's moving. It's alive um, and, and very engaging. And it's got a personality. And, I mean, it's colourful. It's lovely. So I guess a special mention for Vincent Lee's work here. Yeah, I'd agree with that. I think, you know, this is a really good example. And he actually submitted quite a few, didn't he? But this is a really good example of, um, well, top left, you can see that would be the sort of, you know, the, the sort of the, 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 the way you'd be expected to, to deal with it from references. You know, he's taken that, he's, he's, you know, it's come alive and he's put that on the, on, on, on the paper. And I think that, you know, that, that gives you a real sense of, of the live fish um, and you you know you get a real sense of again this is not a scaly fish it's not a it's not a, a, a leathery fish it's this you know sturgeon this this sort of mixture of of you know you've got the leathery skin then you've got these bony scoots along the back and along the flanks and you know you've you know anatomically you get a good sense of it but it but it's yeah and 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 the little thing of the the, the you know the surface of the water above you know just a little a little feature that that you know, just nods to the the context. Yeah. I like how the filament the filament was going along with the body movement. It's it's not the filament wasn't drawn just to fit it in. It was it was it had the correct angle, you know, it looks like mm -hmm. it's coming right at you. Yeah. And the color again, it's it's it, it makes you you really don't see it's that color. It just it makes you imagine just that it's underwater. And that that was I like I really like that because of that. Yeah, completely agree. All, all, all Vincent's um, submissions I thought were wonderful. Um, but it, it, it didn't win this category. Uh, another one won with a real strong consensus among you guys. Yvonne, would you like to uh, introduce the winner for the sturgeon? And the winner is Sam Julian. And what was it, uh, to all three of you, what was it about this entry in particular that, uh, that, that you loved so much? To, to me was the usefulness of art and how you could create empathy to people, probably like a poster. This is something that probably a lot of people, I saw it as something I would totally want to see hung anywhere. So that, that is something when, when art becomes useful as a, as a eco uh, educational tool, then this, this is what, how I unpicked it. I unpicked it with something that probably kids could relate to it, not only scientists, but everybody could relate to it in general. And that's what I liked about it, the, the universality of it, of the, the visual, um, I don't know, the easiness of seeing it. That's what I liked about it, that's like a poster. Yes, that's very perceptive. I don't think I had solidified that thought in my own mind, but that absolutely chimes true. It's somehow so accessible it, you know, in, in a way some of the other art isn't. It's, it doesn't take a big intellectual investment, but actually it speaks, you know, on many levels to you um, in a way that's very smart. Yeah, and, and also, you know, this is very much not a generic fish. This is this is a very much a sort of an, you know, a, a strange weird kind of fish that a lot of people are, you know, what is, you know, is that real? Is that made up? No, that's a real fish, but it's, you know, it is it, in the process of going into that other realm of, uh, yeah. I mean, sturgeon, you know, diff obviously different sturgeon species all around the world, you know, they, they've really suffered in the last couple of centuries. So, um, you know, remnant populations of lots of them, uh, but yeah, be basically tragic if this one disappears completely. Absolutely. You look prehistoric. Yes. Sorry to sorry to interrupt. Uh, this winner was also one of only a, a real hand. You could count on one hand the number of entries that were done in in portraits. All, almost all of them were done in mm. landscape. Obviously, fishes are longer than they are tall, so that kind of makes sense. But that did definitely make this one stand out from amongst the pack, as you say, Ivan. It's almost like a poster. So uh, you know, this, this is the species right here. You know, pay attention to it because it, it may not be around for for much longer. Yeah. Hopefully it is I would expect there. something like this to be in the, how do you call this, in the museum uh, shop, you know, or something that you could, you, it's, it's universal. 
Yep. Okay, and the um, we should move on to the last species category, which is the Titicaca arestius. Um, yeah, w would anyone like to discuss? I think there were um, three or four that uh, you guys wanted to discuss first. Um, would anyone like to jump in on, on one that really kind of caught uh, their eye? Ja Jamie Lee Glanville. Yeah. Um, I've got a note here. Ah, oh, that very green one. This is yeah. I, I get, so you know, I, get, I I think it's quite an economical style, but very accurate. And again, you've got that the sense of light. I think this is white that's actually added, but that sense of light coming from above. And again, I think this was somebody who who put in a number of entries and I, and I think, you know, deserves sort of some, you know, so, some, some mention. Uh, and again, you get a real, you know, you get a sense that this is, you know, this, this is a, a, a real, you know, fish. You've got definite features there. Um, you know, the mouth is very characteristic, the eye. I just thought, I just thought it was very competent and, um, you know, quite, quite, quite simple in some, you know, compared to some of the other really detailed ones we've seen, but one that gives a really, you know, good, um, you know, it's, 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 it's a strong, a strong picture, I would say. Absolutely. Um, anyone else on that? Or should we move on to uh, to another one of the, the, the submissions that you'd like to discuss before we announce the winner? Um, if we're pressed for time, let's move on. But I think Jeremy's right, this just captures the fish. Um, and I'd like to mention one by Calla Beers that um, I like. Uh, it's, it's colourful. Um, it's a bit different. Um, it's not hyper real. Um, but just to give a nod to this one, not like other ones we've seen, I think it, it was sort of a bit of a unique entry. You can see it's the quite, line. quite charming, this one, isn't it? It's, um, it's, it's very... It's, it's very charming. It looks like a kind of jewel or something, a little uh, brooch. Delicate, right? Yeah. yeah. Interesting you say, because, yeah, uh, Ivan, interesting you said that, because the word that was coming to me was like vulnerability. You know, these, these are little, you know, soft bodied animals that are dying out. And in terms of what the competition is about, you know, something like that sturgeon, you know, it's, it's armor plated and, you, and, you know, something like this you've got to you know it, you feel like it's something that needs protecting and i think you know getting that across in this competition is is again it's one of those intangibles but it's it's you know it's coming off this one hmm. brilliant and uh how about the the winner who won this category um i've forgotten that we're not really taking turns is, are we uh eleanor would you like to uh, i can't remember if i've been <laughs> First given not one to, to, to offer all of them, but yeah, would you like to, to say this one? First, I think let's just give a nod to Stanton Fink, who I think was the runner up. Oh, a yeah. very different entry. Um, that oh, yeah. I guess oh, the yeah. threat, the habitat, the, the threat. threat, the fish are there, they're quite strong, but they're not in isolation, they're viewed, you know, in that context of of you know, the, the horrible salmon or trout or whatever. Yeah, I, I, I love the thing, you know, what is it? Is it some kind of frog creeping up on them? You know, I, again, I, I thought that was a really nice, and in terms of the approach, it really stood out from so many other entries. So, yeah, yeah. The introduced predators. Yes. I mean, so relevant. But the winner of this category is another one that really stood out and was very different, I think, to just about all the other submissions. And this was Tracy Sachs Coolman with, I think, a collage or something that looks like a collage, yeah. whether it's been compiled on a screen or is a photograph of a collage. There we um, capture, you know, the threat. Would, would that be a sculpture or a collage? Probably both, right? It could be seen probably as both. Like it assumes sculptural too. Mm, it has yeah, that dimension. I, I, Oh, absolutely. So, so by the looks of it, she's she's um, taken some single use plastic and some 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 cans and kind of flattened them and, and put them together. So, yeah, I, I would have thought it would uh, co uh, constitute a sculpture or, or maybe a kind of multimedia collage as well, I would have thought. Yeah, yeah. But it would be great to see this um, in person to go and visit the exhibition 
that's about to launch and, and sort of stand back and take this in, not on a, on a computer screen, although, of course, it's still very impactful here. And it's, it is art. It does play on that emotional connection. There's clearly a fish in there, and it, is, it has a fish that the features of this lost fish have, but it's so much more. There's a story just in looking that talks about our modern world. And the guilt, and the guilt. <laughs> you're so, Eleanor, you're right. You're, it's 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 a great piece. I like it. That's it's amazing. Yeah, and I think the whole the whole thing of of taking the brief and just and then just you know, just going off where wherever that takes you. I, I I think that you know just imagination. You know, what can we do with this? Let's have some. Well, I think fun is the right word. I mean, you know, you can still you can still have fun with a serious subject. And, and 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 that fun can be the thing that gets people's attention. So um, yeah, you know, deserved winner. Real. Okay. Well, that's uh, that's that's it for the species categories, which means there's only three more categories to go. Uh, first up is 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 the youth category, and I'm keen to give a shout out here to Mrs. Black and Class P7A from St. Dennis's Primary School in Glasgow. The whole class of 11 year olds sent in their own submissions with two of them making the in-house shortlist to send to the judges. So that's two out of 10 came from St. Dennis's. I absolutely love the fact that Mrs. Black engaged the entire class with this competition. And hopefully it's planted the seeds in the pupils' minds to consider freshwater biodiversity and that looking after our freshwater species is just as critical as our marine and terrestrial species. If you're watching Class P7A, huge congratulations and thanks very much to all of you. Uh, hopefully some of you will consider going into conservation when you're older. It's been really fantastic that you guys were engaged. Um, so which, uh, which um, entries in the youth category caught your eye, Ivan? Oh, um, in the youth, I got um, I, I too. Uh, let me see here. So that will be Talia Klimovich, Klimovich, I think. I hope I pronounced that name correctly as well. Um, is this the, was it the one of the sturgeon? This one here. Yes, yes. That that drew my attention uh, because drawing on black is, is, is mm -hmm. always a challenge. Drawing over black paper, I think it is. It's, it's really difficult. And again, you have to leave the empty and the emptiness is seen as black. And uh, it, it's, it was just the amazing detail. It looked like something really fun to do. It looked like something that the person had a lot of fun doing it. And that's important to me. You, you have to have fun and like what you're doing. And this is, it looks like it. He, he put a lot of effort into it. No, it's great, as well as being, I guess, technically really fun to do. It captures the sort of mythicalness. I mean, sturgeon are weird, and this is almost dragon-like and capturing Dragon-like, that. that's right. Yeah. Yeah. The, the otherness of the sturgeon. Mm. Yeah, so it captures captures the, the character and personality of the fish as well as, as being yeah. technically very interesting. It's also worth mentioning that Talia is 10 years old. So, ah. um, to Talia. Well, well done her from, from Perth, Australia. Shout out to Talia. And, and Ivan, I think what you said, the thing about a black background, I think it's actually really appropriate for fish because, you know, you, you, if, you're, if you're under the water, there's mm. the fish and the background just does go off very often into darkness. And here's it this. Pops thing out. So, I, mm. so I think, you know, actually, you know, we see that almost as a sort of a negative or something, but, but you know, image. But no, that's, that's totally appropriate for, for, uh, for a lot of fish. Yes. On the wall. Mm. It has to be placed on the wall. Mm. <laughs> You can imagine it's an aquarium, but it's not moving. A fish is very still in your aquarium. Yeah. <laughs> I think someone wanted to mention Apposite Srit Hall. Yes, that well. was that. That was me. Uh, this was somebody who made a number, put in a number of entries. Very accomplished. Now I'm guessing. You see, the thing is with the thing is with youth. You're talking about. I think it was up to sort of 18, but there might be some, you know, there might be some younger entries. I'm assuming that this is a, an older youth, but just the accomplishment you've got there. Um, simplicity of line, a real feeling for composition, 
uh, sort of subtle coloring. You know, I just think, like I say, there were a number of, of entries from, from Apisit, and I just think, you know, deserved a, a mention. And, and again, I think just the, you know, it's a very pleasing, very accomplished, um, you know, it's all, it's almost, you know, professional illustration standard, you know, which for a youth is, is, is amazing. So, um, yeah, very well done for this. Yeah, yeah. Yes. So, so, so up at it is um, 17, but it, it's obviously so difficult in the youth category because it's anything from age dot up to 18. So that's, I mean, it's, it's almost so broad as to be kind of um, uh, not worthless, but almost so broad as to, as to not make that much sense. Uh, but it's difficult to kind of slice it, um, it through, throughout the different age ranges, but opposite. Uh, I think submitted three or four, and all the entries were similar standard to this. Really, really excellently done. Maybe another. Maybe next time you could you could divide it to you know up to twelve, and maybe and then maybe thirteen to eight. I don't know. Just a thought. Yeah. No, I think. You know, I think so. yeah. Well, I, th mm. this this was this was the first one, and it's been such a success yeah. that we'll, we'll definitely roll it out again, and we'll 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 make some tweaks to um to to it, mm. so the next one will be bigger and better. Um, did somebody want to mention uh, the runner-up as well? Uh, well, that was me as well. That was um, Sophie Taylor. Ah, and this actually, I, I just love this one. This, you know, you look at it's, it's, you, you know, it's, you look at the lines, but it's like, you know, it's, and again, I'm not quite sure what's going on there. You, look, you know, the shading looks a bit sort of all over the place, but mm -hmm. the, the, the line is lovely. And that black eye that completely takes your attention, um, it's, you know, I just, it's, it's got a real sort of feel. It's got a real something. And this, you know, in terms of a fish on the wall, absolutely. You know, I'd go for, I'd go for this. It's, it's, um, yeah, I just, I just, you know, I just kept coming back to that one. And, and, um, and again, it's monochrome. It's not color. It's just you know what you can do with line and, and some shading. And um, again, I don't know. You know, age we don't know. I'm 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 guessing sort of younger, but um, Sophia's nine years old, right? And and again, you know, I you know I you know you sometimes wonder you know um, with 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 youth, you know, sort of okay. You, you mentioned the you know the, the class, you know, how you know how much advice or guidance or whatever is that a factor? But I I just thought. This is this is this has got something, yeah. It came from the heart. It looks like it came yeah. from the heart. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You get that feeling. There's an engagement, engagement between the artist and the fish, which then that that engagement is then projected out from it. So yeah. And and Jeremy, who won uh, the youth category, and, and, right. and what was it about this one? Right, uh, the runner-up was Sophia Taylor, which was the uh, which was we, what we've just seen, isn't it? That's right. And yeah, the winner, right. the winner was uh, Lila or Lila Lila Schwartz, which is uh, I don't know how easy it is to see. Well, quite easy to see, but it's it's actually a, a metal and bead sculpture, um, and Lila's uh, Lila Lila is thirteen years old. So this one was super impressive. What, what did you guys like about this? Um, I, I think again, it's that thing of just going. You know, you've got the brief, and then, but taking it. You know, let's let's go three D, but let's you know, let's do. And again, I think like fish are particularly small fish. They are like little pieces of jewellery, mm. and so let's literally do. Let's literally do. I don't know how big this is. I'm, I'm imagining it's probably about. You know, I'm imagining it's a few. You know, it's, it's sort of like eight inches or something like that. But it's make a little bit of jewelry, which is shiny, and it's you, you know it's you can imagine touching. Uh, yeah, I just think it's uh, yeah, very very nice, very imaginative, entirely appropriate to our subject matter. Mm, absolutely, this one does stand out. I mean, regardless of whether it was a youth entry or not, as somebody who's really you know grabbed that brief and done something really interesting and engaging to look at it's occupying a space that object you know has movement and captures light and color the way a fish does it's a wonderful interpretation and a, and a beautiful object yeah I, I thought it was really fun too it was really fun to look at and as a you know uh, as a collector because i'm a collector too this is something i would be oh yes i want this it, it gave me that, you know, it's like a jewel, just like Jeremy said, it looks like a jewel, you know, something very delicate. Mm. 
I liked it very much. Absolutely. Yeah. Fantastic. Well done, Leela. It's really, really cool. Really good entry. Okay. How old is Do we know how old Leela was? Oh, sorry. Yeah, she's 13 years old and she's, years old. Um, she's based uh, in the States. Alan. Yeah, so the, the portfolio, uh, this was the only one where there was a dead heat uh, between the, the judges' rankings, uh, had the, the same number of, uh, the, the same amount of um, points. Uh, so I put it to the team at Synchronicity Earth, uh, who uh, host Shoal, uh, and uh, put it to them to see who they thought should win. Um, and, well... Uh, Eleanor, would, would you like to uh, talk about the, uh, the, the, the winner and the runner-up for this one? I would indeed. Now, I think that the runner-up was Nicole Banyatov. Am I right? Yes, that's right. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I don't know if we can pull up some of her drawings on screen. Um, she did that interesting sculpture. Um, but also beautiful, I guess, pencil ink drawings on paper, a really lovely portfolio that I guess um, displayed her, the diversity of her talent and her interpretation of the fish. None of them are hyper-realistic, but they're all sort of coloured subtly, subtly and beautifully. Um, so I think, you know, a really good, good range displayed here. Um, and... And she's obviously sort of grappled with what each fish is. Yeah, I, I haven't actually got a, a copy of hers to pull up. But again, head over to the um, the, the shortlist uh, gallery and, and and take a proper look. Um, I, while you're talking, I'll try and try and pull some up. Um, but I, I don't have any on my screen in front of me just yet. Oh, here's one of the buntingy. If you give me one minute, I can pull this up. She, I think she um, submitted maybe seven or eight. So and that, uh, and that included the three D. That in, that included the um, Eleanor. Was that right? The that one. Yes, <laughs> and I, I, I think on the strength of that, and, and I think you know, I was, uh, while while we're looking at the pictures, I, I think the um, you know the actual fish itself. But I think, but I think the. The, the way it was framed, mm. and Ivan, you mentioned that. You know, the, the, you know, there's there's something conceptually about, you know, a three D fish in a frame, just suspended by a piece of wire. I don't know. There's you know some, something, and and yeah, just very, yeah. So of all her portfolio in front of me, this is the one that I guess has the absence of colour <laughs> that you've chosen to pull up, Michael. But yeah. <laughs> But it does, it just displays this incredible talent. I mean, look at the stippling, look at the lines, the brushwork. It, this is a beautiful image, um, yeah. even though it doesn't have the colour that some of her other works in that portfolio did. It just displays her talent really well, I think. But again, you know, monochrome, it's like, you know, black and white photography can be great, can be, you know, every bit as good, inverted commas, as, you know. So, so I think, you know, doing, doing something in monochrome, uh, yeah. you know, it's you know some people prefer black and white photographs to color photographs and i think you know black and white illustrations can have a strength sometimes that the color doesn't it so i mean very first i think one thing one thing her portfolio shows is her versatility uh, you know they're not all you know they're they're, they're 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 not all the same thing you know it's 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 you know different approaches specific to, to, to different fish which i think is very much you know um Exactly. You know, we're talking about individual. Yeah, what's special about this fish? And 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 I think you know her portfolio shows, you know, heightens that that individuality of the different the different species. Mm -hmm. This is a uh, this is Nicole's anamite barb, which um, I mean, it's all, almost uh, it shows the, the the level of quality that this didn't even get discussed earlier because it's just a fantastic entry, I think. Yes. Yes, Very talented. Yeah, okay, so should, should, we, should we push on to, um... on to the winner? Uh, and I'm going to announce the winner. Thank you, Michael. This, well, this is the winner of the portfolio. And the winner was Vincent Lee. So I think we've seen one of his pictures already. But here they all are. Um, so I think we uh, previously looked at that 
sturgeon picture which came with that ripple of water and and the bit of description and in fact all his portfolio entries had um a little bit of you know context of environment and and a bit of information about the species but here they are just in isolation and i mean obviously it's the same style of artwork unlike that other portfolio we just looked at which showed the diversity of, of form and color this is this this is is much more unified in its approach but they're all full of life and color um none of them are, are hyper realistic but they all capture fish i think really very well um, over to you guys to to say what you think I, I like how it's awesome because you can see the different how diverse in shape all the fish in the entries were right like the, the duck build um buntingi that's the, the that face that fish looks like not from another planet too you know it's it's so diverse in the shapes of the fish that were we had in the art contest so that's really nice to see and i think uh you know especially for me what he's done here is very difficult because he has taken you know working on on very limited references none of these fish are the sort of the straightforward lateral view um which is hard enough in itself but you know he has put all of these fish into a sort of you know into a lifelike um pose is the wrong word but you know you know what i mean and to, and to actually do that it's, it's very ambitious uh you know you get it wrong and you know it, it you know it, it's you know, you, you're setting yourself up almost to fail because it's a very hard thing to do. But he's pulled it off. Uh, some, you know, some of them better than others. We, we, you know, we talked about the sturgeon earlier on. That was, you know, but I think to attempt that and to pull it off, and in a, you know a nice, you know, nice use of color as well, um, and you know, hours of work here, um, so as well. But um, yeah, you know, a, a very deserving winner again. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, as you say, Eleanor, uh, each one was originally a, a separate entry with the information about the species on the side. Um, and he's kind of consolidated them into this one picture for the portfolio. Uh, but go, go and have a look at the uh, at the gallery on, on the website to take a look at the individual pictures. Really cool. And Nina's just said in the chat that she wants this for her wall. Well, I received uh, postage of the canvas prints yesterday, so I do actually have one for my wall. <laughs> and this probably will be going on it because I really like it as well. Cool. Well, that's um, that's everything except uh, last and very much not least the overall winner. Now, this was quite an interesting um very different uh submission um ivan would you like to introduce this and uh, I, I don't I, I don't have it on here <laughs> uh who, who knows who won jeremy okay jump in I, I believe i'm right this this um just uh make sure i'm i'm correct here this is this is the this is another fat catfish isn't it that's right yeah and again this was just such a different one this one that really really jumped out uh, in terms of approach and uh, in terms of the technique, I don't know, you know, this is like a, uh, this is done, you know, there's a sort of some, some digital wizardry going on here. Uh, but uh, before it, before it comes up, you know, this is, this is a view, you know, you're underneath this thing, it's heads on top of you. You're looking through the, you know, the Snell's window, you know, the, but it, all, but it's got, it's got, um, it's got echoes of, you know, the, the a near death experience, you know, you're going towards the light, you know, here's this fish, which is being sort of sucked down the tunnel. It's, you know, it's almost, it's got an apocalyptic feel to it. It's again, and you know, in terms of uh, something on your wall, I'm not sort of, you know, make, <laughs> you should do some prints, make these into posters. So I say he or she, um, but uh, you know, this 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 jumped out, and again, a very unusual interpretation of the brief. It's not sort of, you know, it's not an anatom anatomical view, but you get a really good feel for what this creature is, and it's just turned into something with real uh i'm not even looking at it now but i've got such a strong mental picture uh, yeah yeah put it up yeah, yeah. it's, it's so, so, uh, so who, who was it who won and it's What's the name the name the, the name, name of the is, person I've got it here the the uh overall overall where is my so i haven't got have i got i haven't got overall on my list 
I don't have overall on my list. I, I, I could probably. I've had it some. I've had it Eleanor. somewhere. Eleanor. I think Eleanor. her name is Kathy Outlet. Yes, Eleanor. You <laughs> left me off. Overall, <laughs> overall winner. Not, not my fault. <laughs> now show us the picture because it's so awesome. <laughs> And I'm so pleased this one um, has one overall winner. I mean, it just took my breath away. <laughs> it's, it, you know, fat catfish, as I said before, blah, you know, it's just something that to me seems so uncharismatic. But this picture is so charismatic. It's all awesome. thing of beauty. Yeah. I mean, I yeah. think Jeremy <laughs> said it all already before we could see it in front of us. But it's a very impressive interpretation of the brief. Um, I mean, it doesn't even show the whole fish, but it captures the whole fish and so much more. <laughs> yeah, even over to you. <laughs> oh, Michael. Well, oh, is that is that my cue? Yeah. No, I I, I completely agree with everything above. Uh, in, in the guidelines, as mentioned earlier, uh, people were encouraged not to include much of the background, as we wanted the the focus very much to be on the species. But this entry just couldn't be ignored. It's so individual, ambitious, and well executed. Uh, and I, I really love the fact that you can actually see Lake Tota in the background. Um, that the whole thing is is sort of otherworldly and, and ethereal, which is really fitting for such a mysterious species. Um, as mentioned, the, the fat catfish will be the first search for the Lost Fishes expedition that Shoal will work on. And we've, we've been working closely with teams in Colombia to get this moving. And as mentioned earlier, we're planning for them to go to Lake Tota in December to do some media work, some speaking to locals, doing some filming, some photography, uh, trying to get a gauge on uh, whether anybody remembers the fish. Uh, and in February to start the, um, the, the search, the kind of scientific uh, work to find this bizarre wonderful creature so that's pretty much it uh we we at Shoal really hope you've enjoyed this discussion i really have uh, and, and the lost fishes art challenge as a whole um it, it's been a fantastic experience for Shoal, and really uh, like to uh, thank again all the people who got involved uh and uh, as mentioned really want to roll out another one in 2023 so keep your eyes peeled to our newsletter our social media accounts uh and, and keep an eye on what we're up to to stay up to date with the news uh we'll we'll be exhibiting the winners uh at the oxford university museum of natural history this weekend from 5 p.m friday to 5 p.m sunday evening if you live nearby do pop by it will be fantastic to meet you there uh and in the future we hope to roll it out to other exhibition spaces Thank you so much for watching. Thank you incredibly. Thank you so much to our wonderful judges for taking time out of your busy schedules uh, to, to help make this happen. And thanks to everybody who got involved, uh, really, from, from the bottom of my heart. Thanks for submitting these wonderful pieces of art. And thanks to everybody here for watching. I hope you enjoy the rest of your morning, your, your afternoon, whatever time it is where you are. Thanks very much. All right. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye, everybody. Goodbye. Goodbye. Thank you.